Dupuy Middle 2017 at Nationals. Um, will you be recognized upon that list? We'll see. I notice they are saying specifically that they're looking to count the gold medalists at Nationals from Salt Lake. And they're going to open it up to uh, Pumse also. Just cool, because you never know. It's a long way between now and LA and now and Tokyo. It's not that far away. And they could say Pumse is going to be a demonstration sport this year. I mean, for the 2020 Olympics. Could happen. Never know. With the ranking system in place, here's what I wonder will happen. Let's say you have someone who wins a gold medal at nationals, but they beat someone who had a higher rank than them according to the ranking system. Let's say the person was number top five, get to nationals, they don't even bronze. Will they still be, you know, American Taekwondo? All Americans? That's an interesting question to ask because technically the person who they beat would still have more ranking points than them, which would make them a higher rank in the you know the rank the rankings. So if that's what's going on, we have to go back to the coaching situation. If the coaching situation is success towards failure, like say for instance, the number of athletes they had, out of that number of athletes they had to pool how many gold medals, how many silver medals, how many bronze medals, how many no medals at all, including maybe some qualifications. But when you look at the ranking system and the rewards uh, program, you have to ask that question, well, yeah, let's say they're top five and they and it does happen. They get knocked out by, say, someone who was in the top, you know, ranked 15, 16, 17, just don't know. Technically, on the point system, they have more points than them. So if they have more points than them, here you have a dilemma. Okay, so we say we're going to iron that out. Let's see how let's see how it plays out. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. I'm also looking to see how this first All-American team irons out. Because if you look at what's coming down, look at what what has happened. Uh, we had the youth Olympic qualification that uh, we just did here. Uh, earlier in April, we have the Youth Olympic Games that's coming up here soon. We had the Wangzhou Qualification Tournament. We have the Grand Prix that's coming up soon. And I don't know if anyone has seen that Grand Prix schedule, but the Grand Prix is all up everywhere. The Grand Prix is going to be in Rome. It's going to be in uh, United Arab Emirates. It's, it's going to be a Grand Prix series that is going to be something to behold. It's going to be in some very, very beautiful places. I mean, when you look at Rome, you're thinking, wow, you're going to have a Grand Prix in Rome, Italy. That's a nice trip. That's a very beautiful, picturesque trip. I mean, you look at, okay, you got Rome, Italy, which is the first leg of the Grand Prix. Then you have Moscow, which is just been in Moscow a few times. Then you have uh, Chinese Taipei, which is where the, what was it, the, the Universidad, the, the, the World College, uh, you know, games were. Then from there, you have Manchester, okay? Then you have the grand finale, which is in the UAE. The UAE is another good trip. Beautiful. So it's in Fujata. Okay. That's going to be a nice trip. Beautiful skyscrapers, endless desert sky. Sky looks like it goes on forever at night, like you can reach up and touch it. That's going to be interesting. You also have the Taekwondo World Grand Slam. Part of that series and qualifications is right around the corner. So this season is wrapping up. It's going to wrap up very well. It's going to be very, very, very travel intense starting June 1st, which is interesting. The reason why I say that's interesting because let's look at it like from this standpoint. Okay. 
your U.S. national team already. You're in the Grand Prix in Rome. Let's just say you don't do all that hot in Rome. You have U.S. nationals about ooh, roughly a month after you get back home. You still have to perform in the nationals, but then guess what's, guess what's staring you down a little bit less than a month than that if you, you know, get invited back. And I'm saying invited back because, say for instance, if you don't win, there's still slots that you might could be put in. You may be looking at trying to get to Moscow. Moscow will probably be the end of the road for some people. I, I'm thinking, just my double-blind observation, there will be some people that will do pretty good in Rome. I think they'll do pretty good in Rome. Russia, you know, this is the second phase, is, is probably going to be rough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be one of the situations where if you're to the wire, you go Rome, Russia, Chinese Taipei, Manchester. By the time you get to AUE, you're gonna you're gonna earn that spot. I'm glad that they're actually announcing these events now. Now I really hope that you take a look at what happened with some of the youth qualifications, and also look at what's going to come down the pipe here with the Grand Prix. Now I know this is United States, but one thing I'm wondering if they're going to implement is the production clauses. What I mean by production clauses is, say for instance, if you're a member of say the Canadian team or another team and you don't do too well in tournaments representing that country, they don't just let you waltz back in year after year. You're not just familiar your face. And it seems to be that I've read all the texts, and if someone else is, you know, reading stuff just like I am, you know, leave a comment, you know, down in the comment section. I didn't read anything that, that actually says, you know, if you don't, you know, produce, you don't, you know, suffer anything for it. You don't lose anything for it. You just come back, come back, come back, come back. And it goes back to what I said earlier about being the only one that shows up or being the guy that showed up. Now, there are some instances where certain weight classes, the weight classes are flooded. Some weight classes, the weight classes aren't so flooded. If you want to win on the international stage, it goes back to what I was saying about following the international rules. Knowing the international rules, knowing the travel schedule, knowing how the travel schedule is, being able to understand that it is not going to be easy internationally because international Taekwondo athletes want to win also. I'm hoping that this shakeup in coaching where more the coaching pool is opened up and it's not just the usual suspects. The reason why I'm glad we're hopefully leaning away from the usual suspects is because I can understand there are some people, some coaches that did well 20 years ago. But just because you did well 20 years ago, coming into this modern era, you're not doing too well. I don't see what the problem is to open up the pool a little bit. Maybe get, and also keeping track of the success you've had with athletes. But I also believe there should be an athlete, athlete accountability at some point, which means that you go to a particular tournament or, or series of tournaments and you don't produce, you know, you have to remember something. When you make the U.S. team, even though it's one of those things that you think people don't pay attention to, they actually do. You're supposed to be the best of the best, it's not just as a personality and all that stuff, but as an athlete and as someone who can win on that international stage. I was glad to see some of the guys that came up, the new guys that came up from the U.S. Uh, national team and juniors and things like that. But I'm very concerned about them because when you go back and look at some of the, and you can go to YouTube and look up uh, the youth Olympic uh, qualifications and all those things and look at some of those uh, matches, it's 
something has to change. And the reason why I say something has to change is because far too often I've noticed, especially in these last three years, and this year being 2018, not being an exception, it's not looking too good because I'm looking at some of the people that are possibly going to be competing at nationals this year and it's some of the same familiar faces okay but it's also some of the same you know mistakes I've seen that's been made over the years as an athlete at that level I said it once I'm gonna say it again US Open President's Cup Pan Am Open those are the big leagues US Nationals is the big league so we really have to conduct ourselves when it comes to winning especially since you know you're going up against international athletes and these international athletes are more than just good personalities these international athletes are coming to win I'm hoping that the production from the Youth Olympic Games sends a message that we need to work more on the immediate also because it's a big brave world now. I know I'll go back to it but I was saying 2020 is going to be very interesting because it'll be the direct head to head between Taekwondo and Karate. And Taekwondo from the international level wants to put their best foot forward. So I'm hoping, because I'm going to actually travel to nationals and just, you know, see what's going on and, and do a little bit of scouting because I don't know what direction they're going to do the live stream this year. Um, they usually work with uh, Team USA and the Olympic Channel. It just, it all depends. No one has said it just yet. And it's one of those things where you have to sit back and wait. I'm looking forward to the Pan Am Open. It's in Spokane, Washington this year, in the United States and Washington State. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking very forward to that because that'll be the first Pan Am Open that I won't need a passport for. <laughs> and I won't need a visa for. Well, not well. No, Mexico, you don't need a visa. Canada, you don't need a visa either. But I'm just saying. It's the, it's the first one that is actually, you know, inside the lower 48. You have to leave the country. I think it's going to be exciting. I'm hoping that we get more events like that. I would like to see one of the Grand Slam series here somewhere. You know, it's not like we got, we got L.A., we got New York, we got Orlando, we got Dallas, we got Houston, we got um, Chicago, we got... Just pick somewhere. We have the cities and facilities to host a Grand Prix. You know, maybe we need to think about our own Grand Prix here in the States. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt. It definitely wouldn't hurt. I mean, if China has the businessmen to put up almost $100,000 plus in prize money to motivate and get better athletes, $200,000 in prize money for a Grand Prix in the US, here in the U.S. wouldn't be a bad idea. Now, you may be saying, well, that's going to attract athletes. Well, that is, a, that is a discussion topic. It might attract some athletes that, you know what I'm saying, are just coming for the money. But if they follow the standards, flatly, and I'll say it again, every athlete that claims they want to jump into a Grand Prix for the money, they're not going to be qualified to do it. And it takes time to do it correctly, especially if you say, oh, they're having a great Taekwondo Grand Prix that has a $140,000 grand prize. Let me jump in that. Much like the Boxing Association, much like um, U.S. Tennis, U.S. Golf. There are mechanism in place to filter that out if you use them but the magic word is you have to use them so I'm hoping 
for some good news and to see some good positive things. I really am optimistic because I want to also see what comes out of some of the sanctioning of events that is going on now and how those points are going to work. You know, I, I would really, it would really be awesome to have more events in the Southeast, you know, South Carolina, Alabama, you know, Florida, Mississippi, or Louisiana, as a matter of fact. That would be, you know, to have something, an event in New Orleans, really? Biloxi? If you don't know where Biloxi is or Biloxi, Mississippi is, Google it. And I'm pretty sure everyone knows about New Orleans. You know, have an event in New Orleans, Grand Prix, U.S. Nationals, come on, New Orleans. Don't know? Need to ask somebody, seriously. My enthusiasm for the rest of this year is going to be great. I've seen some very good changes that have really impressed me, that have really given me some hope. I got to continue to get myself health-wise together. Um, I promise you guys some training montages. I'm editing those. Uh, if you you're gonna notice, it's gonna be some. You know, if, if you see me in a in a, in a in a training montage, my outfit changes four times in that 15 or 20 minute span. You know, not every gym I use when I travel allows you to film. So with cardio, you may see me doing something but then by the time I get to the leg press machine I'm wearing something completely different so I'm warning you ahead of time that's what's going to happen that's what you're up against that's what you got to see so finishing up the news for April um, if you want to read some of those articles go to Team USA USA Taekwondo USA TKD and you can get the information now on some sidebars I got the question flooded to me about black belts again. Listen, here's my take on it. I recognize that there are guys who worked, and I'm saying that to cover, you know, women too, that worked very hard for their black belt recognition from their school. I understand that. And I recognize that when you train, you get your cardio together, your nutrition together, you do it. I understand all that. But I also understand this part too. There has been a lot of mess that's going on with people just getting certificates saying they're ready to train for the first degree and this and that. I understand that there are different style things you are taking consideration. I get that also. Please understand that in this modern era, you have to change with the times. You can't just keep trying to hold on to things in the past that have caused more damage than good. And nothing's wrong with working hard and trying hard. Just complete the journey. One thing I really hope to see at the end of this year is a seriousness about comp competition and winning here in my country. I really hope that we have better showings on the junior level, better showings on the senior level. And I'm I'm willing to do my part. Train and win and qualify for different events. I'm willing to do my part. This year, end of this year, is going to be a game changer because I don't know if anyone recognizes this or not, but 2019 next year 
it won't be a mad scramble for the Olympics. It'll be by January 1st, 2020, have you gotten the points together, qualification tournaments together, wins together, to win that slot for the Olympics. You know, 2019 is going to be another one of those years where you're going to have Pan American Games and then immediately following that, the next year you have the Olympics. That's going to be something to think about. I want to take a second to talk about something that's near and dear to my heart that I hope to also see some improvements in. Alabama has a state games. Last year, karate was added to the state games, which is awesome. This year, you got karate and taekwondo in the Alabama state games. That, to me, is wonderful. I don't know if the karate side is going to do the Olympic karate style in the current form as one of the events, but I do know that as far as Taekwondo is concerned, I hope this year, especially with it being in Huntsville, and you have three schools up there that are Olympic style, there is another official Olympic sparring event with your electronic sparring systems in place. And I'm not just talking about the guys holding the clickers. I'm talking about your socks, chest guard, the whole nine. I would like to see that this year. Will I participate this year on the Taekwondo side? Because last year I participated on the karate side. Don't know. We'll see. We will see. But I'm really hoping that something good comes out of that and they, since it's in Huntsville, you know, I'm really hoping that it's a great tournament, great event, and that someone who participates in that event gets a spark in them to want to participate for the United States on the national level. That would be awesome. And I really and truly hope it happens. Uh, that's going to compl- conclude this segment. As usual, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for watching the whole videos. My audience retention on these are great. Thank you for doing that. I really appreciate that. Uh, thank you for liking the video. If you liked the video, thank you for donating. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you in the next segment. I might have on a different shirt. But thank you guys again. Recently, we hit that 35,000 subscriber mark. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Please continue to watch all my videos. Please continue to watch the entire video. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for donating. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you in the next video.